The global shipping enterprise is undergoing a profound transition to reduce carbon emissions and contribute to a more sustainable future. Global shipping, especially container shipping, carries more than 80% of world trade by volume. The maritime sector of the global economy also contributes 2.89% of greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, with 30% of that attributable to container ships. This represents an emissions contribution equivalent to roughly the sixth largest country. The International Maritime Organization, IMO, the United Nations specialized agency focusing on maritime safety, security, and pollution prevention, has been guiding the maritime world forward in the complex and highly technical process of decarbonization, beginning with regulations in 1997 addressing carbon dioxide from ships. The IMO in July 2023 adopted the historic strategy on the reduction of greenhouse gas, GHG, emissions from ships. The key objective is to attain net zero greenhouse gas emissions from shipping by 2050. Two important targets are outlined, cutting annual greenhouse gas emissions, compared to 2008 levels, by at least 20% by 2030, notably striving for a 30% reduction, and by 70% in 2040, striving for 80%. The economic, technical, such as alternative fuel use, investment, and environmental policy challenges are considerable for the short term as well as for reaching the ultimate goal of net-zero GHG emissions by mid-century. The IMO strategy also addresses equity and justice issues, including the effects of mitigation measures on states, particularly developing countries. Indicating the complexity of such effects, the IMO calls for comprehensive assessments that must consider an array of issues, geographic remoteness, cargo value and type, transport dependency and costs, food security, disaster response, cost effectiveness, and socioeconomic progress and development. The biggest challenges to reducing and eventually eliminating GHG emissions from the maritime industry are interconnected, and there are multiple pathways to pursue, including ship efficiency technologies, alternative propulsion fuels, regulatory incentives, and operational measures. Foremost, the scale of maritime decarbonization is broad, with multiple stakeholders. Across maritime nations, the European Union, shipping companies, energy suppliers, ports and port authorities, and society, in which customer and market demand are key factors. Global regulatory work at the IMO is necessary, but regional initiatives, such as green shipping corridors and local regulations for ports, inland waterways, and shoreside infrastructure are critical to undertaking a comprehensive approach to this problem. Technical developments for ship propulsion using alternative fuels and dual fuel engines are emerging. Ships powered by liquefied natural gas, LNG, as a near-term bridging strategy, are underway today. Engines that will be capable of operating on lighter non-carbon fuels such as advanced biofuels, renewable ammonia, and hydrogen, are in development for large-scale future deployment. However, one global challenge is the lack of sufficient production and reliable availability of these zero-carbon fuels in the world's ports. An example of the planning taking place is the Hamburg Hydrocarbon Strategy, a regional effort to make the port of Hamburg a future energy hub for green hydrogen and green ammonia. Additional complex issues remain. Safety issues with the expanded use of more volatile fuels is a key strategic factor for ships, bunkering, and port infrastructure. There continues to be uncertainty surrounding the rules and regulations for emissions reduction. And most of the proposed strategies are long-term, which hinders private sector investment. Decarbonization of global shipping is on par with the transition in the 19th century from sail to steam power. Moving away from ships powered by heavy fuel oil, the dominant fuel for the past six decades, is a revolutionary change that will require close international cooperation, strategic partnerships, innovation, and long-term investments to attain net-zero carbon across the entire maritime industry.
If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing or becoming a member of the Naval Institute by visiting usni.org join.